الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله I wanted us to take a moment because there are so many questions about how to deal with the fitna. How do we, how do we live? Is Ahl Sunnah Aslan a da'wah of fitna? Being Salafi, does that mean fitna only? Does that mean trials and tribulations one after another between one another? And of course the answer of Habitifillah is la. That's not the case. But we need a few principles to help guide us on this journey. We need a few principles to help us, and these come from the ulama. And so I'm going to very briefly, as quickly as I can, because this is something that books have been written about, give you a few pointers that I've learned from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, from various ulama of Ahl Sunnah that I've studied with in Saudi Arabia and in Yemen, to give an idea on how to deal with this. And what I've learned over the years is that many of the ulama, they want to squash this. They are tired of these questions. They are tired of people taking people off the minhaj for no reason. They are tired of this one refuting that one and trying to get a fatwa from Sheikh so and so who doesn't even know what's going on in the situation or about this individual because the people have given an incorrect picture about the individual. They are tired of this. And you can see this in their speeches. And you can see this in how they deal with the questions. And you can see this in how they uh, directly interact with the students of knowledge and tell them we're tired and tell them we don't take phone calls even from certain countries. Some scholars don't even want to hear things that come from America or come from the UK or come from Algeria or from the Libyans. Why? Because sometimes they are known to be the people who love the fitna the most and who want to speak about and cause fitna the most. So then the ulama will reject them. Fitna. Fitna bayna ahlu sunnah. Fitna, and the ulama have uh, explained this, but let's just try to be as brief as possible. A trial or test in the religion. This is what we will define and restrict fitna to in the context of what we're talking about. Is a trial or test in the religion. And this is fitna when it's war between Muslims, Muslims killing Muslims, or fitna when ahlu sunnah is having uh, discord between them. The types of fitna, habit al fala, we have fitna in the deen and fitna in the dunya. Perhaps in a matter of the, the dunya, in these worldly affairs, you have a fitna with someone in that you are tested in wealth. You're tested with uh, your, your children. For those of you who have children, you know, especially as they get older, we are tested. Why? Because our children, some of them want to go back to kufr. Some of them want to go to ma'asi and dharub. Some of them want to go to this and that. And some of them want to be with Ahl Bidah. So how do we deal with that? That is what is the trial and the test. It's not knowing and trying to search for answers and how to deal with that fitna of the dunya or fitna that you have between yourself and someone which is personal. That's also fitna. And fitna in the deen. And this is what we are referring to, fitna in your religion. Maybe you have a test personally in your own iman. That's a fitna. Maybe you have a personal uh, a fitna between you and a group of brothers or sisters. That's a fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Wa'lamu innama mu'alakum wa awlalikum fitna, wa inna Allah indahu ajrun azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, it just begins with an amr. Wa'lamu innama mu'alakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, not in, although it is in fi'l uh, amr, but he is saying here, subhana, he's, le he's letting, he's saying no, no for sure. And he's addressing a, a group, all of us, know for sure that verily your wealth and your children are a fitna, that they're a test. And verily with Allah is Ajrun Alim, that with Allah there is a great vast reward. We can't even count the reward. Meaning that if you can put up with those trials and tribulations with those with your, your children and with your family and with your wealth, and you remain on Islam, you remain on Kitab wa Sunnah, then there's Ajrun Alim. There's a great reward for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al-Kareem. 
ونبلوكم بشر بشر والخير فتنة وإلينا ترجعون الله سبحانه وتعالى says and we test you uh, with uh, with evil and with good as a as a fitna and to us you will return because we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether we pass that trial or whether we don't. And alhamdulillah, although we're speaking a lot now about trials of the dunya, and but this refers to all the trials in the deen, in the dunya, that if you pass it, if you hold on to the Qur'an and you hold on to the sunnah and you stay firm on the madhab of the salaf, regardless, you're going to get knocked. You're going to get knocked from the right, you're going to get knocked from the left. <clears throat> And there's going to be so many trials. You're going to have people who loved you once who now are cursing you. They praised you yesterday, but now they curse you and they oppose you. You're going to have those people calling you from Ahl Bid'ah. But the test, they cannot take you away from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They can claim that you're off the sunnah, but they cannot remove you from the sunnah of the message of Allah ﷺ. So you have to be firm on it. And you're going to be tested, and you're going to have to stay firm. And the best way to do that is in good company and with ilm. Ahabat al-Fillah. The Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith of Hudayfa, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال, فتنة للرجل في أهله وماله وجاره تكفرها صلاة والصيام وصدقة. That the trial that a person deals with from his wealth and his family uh, and his neighbor, that Allah expiates those sins and those, those trials and relieves it by prayer and fasting and sabata. So also increasing your ibadah during times of trial. And I'm going to give you another, some real stories that I've witnessed. And this was a time of great fitna in Medina. I was living in Medina at the time. Some of the ulama, like Sheikh Abdul Razak, uh, he's the son of Sheikh Abdul Masan al Abad. Also, uh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari and Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, and, some, and I believe Sheikh Suleiman Rahili also, that they were being tested. Uh, some of them were being accused by uh, a Sheikh at the time named Sheikh uh, Fali al Harbi. And Allah Kulihal, this man proved that Sheikh Rabi refuted him extensively, he proved to be a person of fitna and had false uh, kawa'id and principles that he was applying and his extremism and his hadadiyyism uh, to the religion. But what I learned from those ulama, because at this time I was seeking knowledge very much with some of those mashayikh, and I saw, I never saw Sheikh Abdul Razak speaking about fitna, but always immersed in giving the people manners and alb. And Sheikh Ibrahim, I spent extensive time with him and studied books with him, and he only taught us. He gave us the kawa'id and principles on how to deal with this fitna. And I saw Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Suleiman or Rahili as well. I studied with him as well. Ilm. Just bringing ilm. And when you enter into his dars, you felt like uh, it's indescribable. May Allah preserve our ulama. Allah, this comes with ilm and being firm on the sunnah and not going this way and this way. And we're going to get to that, alhamdulillah. Some of the things in which we, uh, uh, before we get to the ilaj or the uh, cure, let's talk about some of the reasons for fitna. Some of the reasons are weak iman. Sometimes our iman is weak. And Ahl Sunnah believes iman, yuzid wa yamqus, yuzid bi ta'a wa yamqus bi ma'asiyah. We believe that iman fluctuates and it increases with obedience to Allah and it decreases with sinfulness. And there's so much evidence for that, and we don't want to go, but we can go to the hadith of the hadith uh, where the Prophet وسلم, said, Men ra'a minkum munkarin Whoever sees a munkar from amongst you, then change it with his hand. The shahid here is that changing the munkar is on different levels with a hand with the tongue speaking out against it, or in the heart, hating in the heart, letting us know that those are all parts of Iman as well. Ahabatifillah, the second way, uh, reasons for fitna, is love of the dunya and position. Some people, they love their position, they love to have a position. And this is affected in the da'wah. Some people, they are head of da'wah organizations, they're head of the masjid, and they love it. They're the part of the committee of the masjid, 
They don't want to give it up. And it's not even about giving it up, but they love that position so much that anything that feels, sometimes it's jealousy and hatred with someone just because they're sharing knowledge, they don't like them because they feel threatened in their position. So sometimes it's a love of the dunya, it's that position, that status. Sometimes it's a status, you are the leaders in the Salafi Dawah, you're the leaders in this, but you feel threatened because there's new guys on the scene. You shouldn't, but instead you should embrace them if they're calling the Kitab or Sunnah, and then we can go forward together. Let's keep more, let's hit them from more angles, let's attack Ahlul Bid'ah and their, 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 their belief system. Let's attack their creed, let's attack their minhaj based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf from different angles. Oh, you're in the UK in Birmingham, you're in Luton, you're in Croydon, you're in Charleston, whatever. This one's in Philly, this one's in Seattle, this one, let's, let's get them. Let's unite based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, let's not let the love of the dunya get us in status. Uh, the third thing, Ahabatullah, is arrogance. Arrogance towards the truth. Sometimes a person makes a mistake, they don't want to change it. They can't. And I know some people, I know some people who even are level of ulama, but they're, they have some arrogance. And they have been refuted, but they cannot change their position because maybe they're Bedouin or whatever the situation is, but they can't. Uh, it's a trial for them. That's a fitna for them that they can't seem to embrace the truth on their mistakes, but instead it increases. Wazadahum fi in arrogance. It increases them in arrogance, increases them in rejecting the truth. We can't be like that. Habit al and may Allah protect us from it. Ameen. The fourth thing, Habit al is jahil. Jahla fi ahkam al shari'i is being ignorant. Uh, ignorant in Sharia rulings, and this is a big fitna. Wallahi, it's a big fitna, especially we have this in the West, but I'm not gonna point the finger at the West, because Wallahi, I've traveled to Indonesia, I, I've been in Ethiopia, I've lived in Yemen, i lived all over, and Wallahi, it's the same story. The Shabab, Yemeni Shabab, they know Arabic language, but some of them are Jahim, some of them, they're, they're blind followers, and they will only try to refute you based on their Hawa, based on their arrogance, based on their Jahim of the Shara. They'll come up with bid'ah, trying to refute what they believe is bid'ah. And this is dangerous. This is what many of the sects in Islam, they did. Uh, they, for example, some of the, uh, the in, to, to, to run from being the mu'attala, those people who, or uh, those people who negate sifat, instead some will affirm it to the extent, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to where they make tishbih. So they go from one extreme to the other. They ran from a type of kufr to another kufr. And that's going too far. I'm in the middle here. You're going from here. Here this one is making ta'til of sifat. This one is making tashbih of sifat. But it said come to the middle where Ahl Sunnah is. So sometimes people go from a bid'ah and from ignorance to another type of bid'ah and another type of ignorance. And that's something to learn. So ignorance in ahkam al -shar. And how many, how many fitness can you think about in your locality, whether you be in the UK, whether you be in France, whether you be in Italy, wherever you are, where you see brothers who didn't study, or brothers who studied one year. Oh, mashallah, he went to Damaj one year. Mashallah, he went two months to Hudayda. Mashallah, he, he dropped out of Jamal Salamiya. Mashallah, he did. It's people who gained something of Elm. Maybe a little bit. Maybe they gained nothing of Elm. Maybe they gained a little language. Maybe they didn't gain much of the language. Whatever they gained, whatever they didn't gain, but they shouldn't be speaking about certain issues, but they're causing fitna. This is what we have a lot of, brothers and sisters. Some people never study. It's just they got from the websites. This website said this. This one said this. This one said this. And I'll tell you another true story. And this happened to me in Seattle from a brother, and I love him, may Allah forgive us and him, but this was a long time ago due to his ignorance. I had come back for the summer, and I lived with these ulama. I sat and studied with Sheikh Abdul Masih. And there was a translated speech defending a person who left the sunnah at the time on one of the Salafi websites. And they, they translated a statement of one of our Salafi Mashayikh who said, whoever speaks about so-and-so is ignorant or they're this. You know, and it was a very strong tezkiya the sheikh made for this other sheikh who then left the sunnah, who left, who went into bid'ah. So it was a mistake on the sheikh, or it was a general statement of the sheikh's kalam, but the people, they translated it, so then the people in the west could have it, and then the people ran with it, because they didn't know. So then I came back to my locality, and the brother said, oh, sheikh, uh, sheikh so-and-so said 
uh, whoever says this about Sheikh Fadeh or whatever is a ignorant or is this. Sheikh Abdul Muslim spoke against him. I said, Subhanallah, Ahi, do you have an aql? What are you talking about? I studied with all three of those Mashaikh. Sheikh Abdul Muslim is the father of all of them. He, there's no comparison between him and the one who gave the tizkiyah and the one being criticized. None of them. That is a uh, muhaddith, Jazirat al Arab, as it was narrated to me from one of the tulab that Sheikh uh, Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi said about Sheikh Abdul Muslim, who will lie attached. I have to feel like the point is, is being jahil. So this is also a, a fitna and a problem. Hezbiya, Hezbiya, we don't want to get too deep into that. We could write books on that, and there's maybe in the future we'll talk about it. So we can be short. The ilaj, how do we cure this stuff? And I wanted to mention also the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ لَذِينَ فِتْنُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا Verily those who and this is the use of fitna in the Quran, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses it, because one of the meanings of fitna is that it has to do with a burning, burning by fire. And uh, as Ben Rafaimin says, قَالَ عُلَمَا فِتْنُ بِمَعْنَا أَحْرَقُوا كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى يَوْمُهُمْ عَلَى النَّارِ يَفْتَنُونَ So he said that one of the meanings of fit, fitnu is that it means to burn by the fire. This is what the scholars of Tafsir have said. And uh, with regards to that, the, the people who were burning the, uh, the, the believers, that these people, they were, Ben Othimin mentions a fire they hear, that as we mentioned, that here it means that they were burning the believers. It also has the meaning, as the Sheikh mentioned, that uh, that also they were trying them by get, trying to prevent them from being on the path of Allah, to be, by being on the Surat Allah Mustaqim, by being on the Surat Mustaqim, they were they were uh, attempting to close the path of guidance, you know, steer them away from the path of guidance. And how to this is very dangerous. This just made me think of a point. How many people, people who are new to the deen, come to the deen, come to the Dawah to Salafiyah, and then they get around certain brothers who engage them in major, uh, major issues. So and so, make sure the first thing they get instead of learning about Tawheed, they say, you know, stay away from this one, stay away from this masjid, this one here. These guys are hisbies. They're playing, uh, you know, this, that, and the other, whatever. They get the people so confused. And this is the tarbiyah they give them, that the people either leave the deen, or they go with the people of Hizbiya, or they're just so confused they don't know where they're going. They don't know whether they're going to the right or to the left. And this is a fitna. You are giving them a fitna. You are producing fitna and trial for the youth. And that is something you don't want to be responsible. And me, myself personally, I don't want to have any part of that. And that's why I try to just teach. I try to just teach. I try to give some principles. I try not to give too many specific things about some of the fitna that's going on between the brothers, because my position is this, now you have it, is that, yes, we have some mistakes with some of our brothers, and some of our brothers have mistakes. You'll find both of them have mistakes. Some of them have ifrat, and some have tafrit. Some of them are too extreme, and some of them are too easy, too mutasahim. And then you have those, alhamdulillah, there are those who are, who are in the middle. They're trying to call the kitab wa, wa sunnah. And they're, 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 they're not throwing away the principles of Ahl sunnah. And they're using hikmah and they're sticking with the ulama and trying to do that. So we have all of that within the da'wah. So we don't want to spend our time attacking our brothers who are extreme by name and making some mistakes unless it be necessary. I'm not going to be the one to do that. Or our brothers who are being mutasahil. Instead we want to call them. Because we're all called, we take from the same ulama, we're calling to the same madhab and minhaj, but sometimes we fall into error, sometimes we fall into bid'ah, all of us. We all fall into mistake. Prophet said, Kul ibn Adam khatao khayran khatayina tawa'un. All the children of Adam uh, commit sin, and the best of those are those who repent. So again, the ilaj, the medicine, ilm, knowledge, 
The Prophet said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the deen. Ulama, sticking with the ulama. And some people, they say, we're, we're with the ulama. And they're talking about one or two scholars. No. But we're talking about seeking knowledge with the ulama and not blind following and so forth. You know, that sometimes uh, there can be a goal from your shaykh that it doesn't seem to sit right with the adilla or it doesn't seem to sit right with the waqa, with, 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 the, with the reality of the matter. So you cannot accept that if it's going against the truth, if it's going against the evidence. We go with the strongest evidence, even if it's a beloved scholar of ours. So, and ulama and taqwa, fearing Allah as much as you can, trying your best, keep your ibadah up, because that's going to keep you in touch with Allah. That's what it's all about. It's not about being uh, thinking you're an imam at Jarwa Ta'deel, or you're this, or you're that, but it's about coming closer to Allah. The reason we refute Hamza Yusuf, or we refute this one, or we refute, because we see that they're making bid'ah in the deen. I would love for Hamza Yusuf, he has such a big following, I would love for him to be on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, calling the kitab illa wa sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ala salaf, I would love that. I would go, go sit next to him. But we don't have that, so we have to speak about that because he is causing facade in the deen. Likewise, Ahabitifillah. So, the point being is that you, you do that for the sake of Allah. That's the point. In the dunya. So you're refuting those mistakes of Ahl Bid'ah because it should be out of taqwa. It should be to defend the religion of Allah before anything. We don't care. Call me what you want. Speak, threaten me if you want. You don't like I criticize ISIS. You don't like that I, I spoke about Yasser Qadi. You don't like, that. well, that's not going to hurt me nor is it going to benefit me. But my relationship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it was based on the haq, then that's, that's all that counts. Everything else is, is, is menendik. Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tatbiq, as we said, practice. Practicing your best, doing your best. And all of us have mistakes. And anything I said that was correct is from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.